Uh, bottom line, if you're here in your grant application, you probably had a section on, ha on uh, collaborations and partnerships. And the gist of that is that you're going to be held accountable for maintaining those. And it's more than just dotting that I and taking care of those regulations because it's the way to run a grant. It's the way, it's the easiest way to get qualified students and referrals, uh, and it's just the way to operate. So I think that's part of the point, or the, the point. Partnering requires leadership. I'm not going to read this to you. You already know that, but somebody is going to have to identify the organizations, make the contact, uh, utilize an advisory board. How many folks here have a advisory board for your HEP or your camp? Almost, that's fantastic. <coughs> Almost everybody. We, I call my advisory board members regularly for referrals, advice, um, problems, can you help me solve? I mean, we really, we have an active advisory board and we utilize them as a resource. Um, the, I'm not going to go over this too much, but I discussed it before, the difference between networking, the, the technical, if you research collaboration and collaboration in education, you see that it's beyond just networking, it's value added. Um, Javier just told me that he's coming to North Carolina to go to East Coast Migrant Head Start. They host a class for us in Clayton, which is in Johnston County, which is right outside of Raleigh. Um, they donate the space entirely free of charge. They set up, they provide cleaning services, um, they refer students, and that is an example, because it's value added, of more than just networking, that is a collaborative effort. 